Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to discuss about acute pancreatitis, a serious and often misunderstood condition. We'll cover classification, discuss the dreaded complications, learn how differential diagnosis is made, and most importantly, detail the principles of treatment. Stay with me to fully understand this complex condition. Basically, acute pancreatitis refers to a sudden and severe inflammation of the pancreas. It is caused by a variety of factors, such as migrated gallstones, alcohol consumption, hypertriglyceridemia, elevated calcium levels, so on and so forth. I will not get into the details right now, but if you want to see a real case of a patient with acute pancreatitis, you should check my other video about this topic. Long story short, the most common causes are gallstones, responsible for approximately 40 to 50 percent of cases, and excessive alcohol consumption, responsible of approximately 25 to 35 percent of the cases. The diagnosis of acute pancreatitis is made using clinical manifestations, severe upper epigastric pain irradiating to the back, often relieved by leaning forward, laboratory findings including increased lipase or amylase level by three times, and imaging that indicates a pancreas inflammation, such as a CT scan or an abdominal ultrasound. To understand acute pancreatitis, it is crucial to classify it correctly. So current guidelines, such as those from the American College of Gastroenterology, have specific criteria. According to the revised Atlanta 2012 criteria, acute pancreatitis is divided into three main categories. Mild acute pancreatitis is the most common form, accounting for about 80% of cases. It's characterized by the absence of organ failure and the absence of local or systemic complications. Moderately severe acute pancreatitis presents with either transient organ failure, lasting less than 48 hours, or local or systemic complications, but without persistent organ failure. Severe acute pancreatitis is defined by the presence of persistent single organ failure lasting more than 48 hours or multiple organ failure. Morphologically, Atlanta classification divides acute pancreatitis in two forms, interstitial edematous acute pancreatitis, which is characterized by inflammation of the parenchyma without areas of necrosis, and necrotizing acute pancreatitis, which is associated a more severe form of the disease. To determine the severity of acute pancreatitis and establish which patients should benefit for intensive monitorization in the ICU, multiple clinical and paraclinical markers should be taken into consideration. The signs and symptoms, the lab findings, the imaging results, the causing factor, so on and so forth. Major red flags you should consider are any of these findings. The age over 65, diabetes, other cardiac comorbidities, heart rate smaller than 40 beats per minute or bigger than 150, systolic arterial pressure less than 80 millimeters of mercury, respiratory rate more than 35 breaths per minute, oxygen arterial saturation less than 80%, anuria, serum glucose more than 800 milligrams per deciliter, severe hypo or hypernatremia, and finally severe hypo or hyperkalemia. Complications of acute pancreatitis are divided into local complications and systemic complications. Local complications develop in or around the pancreas. There are three main local complications. Peripancreatic fluid collections, which are accumulations of fluid around the pancreas, appearing within the first four weeks of onset and often resolving spontaneously. Pancreatic pseudocyst forms if an acute fluid collection persists for more than four weeks and is encapsulated by a fibrous wall. Pancreatic necrosis is a serious complication where pancreatic or peripancreatic tissue is destroyed by the inflammatory process. Multiple organ dysfunction syndrome is the most feared systemic complication and the leading cause of death in severe acute pancreatitis. It can affect the respiratory system, acute respiratory distress syndrome, the renal system, acute kidney injury, or the cardiovascular system. Sepsis and septic shock can result from infected necrosis found on the pancreas and it is a life-threatening condition. Epigastric abdominal pain is a common symptom of many conditions, which makes differential diagnosis extremely important. Some conditions with which acute pancreatitis can be confused include biliary colic or acute cholecystitis, perforated peptic ulcer, mesenteric ischemia, inferior myocardial infarction, ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm, intestinal obstruction, and acute pyelonephritis. Pro tip. You must certainly pay close attention to the amylase and lipase levels. It is true that even the other conditions can also cause increases in pancreatic enzymes, though usually not three times the upper limit of normal. In terms of treatment options, initial management must include fluid replacement, 
Numerous studies indicate that intravenous hydration must be the first line therapy in acute pancreatitis. Usually are used crystalloid solutions such as Ringer's lactate solution in moderate to large volumes in the first 24 to 48 hours. It is essential to monitor vital signs in acute pancreatitis. As mentioned earlier, the greatest fear in acute pancreatitis is multiple organ failure. Therefore, daily monitoring of urine output, blood pressure, heart rate, and arterial oxygen saturation is required. Pain control is absolutely crucial, not only for patient comfort, but also because uncontrolled pain can contribute to hemodynamic instability. Intravenous opioids such as morphine, hydromorphone, fentanyl are first-line agents. In clinical practice, the patient must not eat for a couple of days until the pain gets better. In mild acute pancreatitis, oral feeding with a low-fat diet can be resumed as soon as pain subsides. In moderately severe or severe forms, enteral nutrition via nasal jejunal tube is preferred over parental nutrition as it maintains gut barrier integrity and is associated with fewer complications. Many patients diagnosed with acute pancreatitis suffer from great emesis and vomiting. Therefore, antiemetic medications, such as metoclopramide, can be used to alleviate associated symptoms in acute pancreatitis. Management of the underlying cause is a key point in the treatment of acute pancreatitis. For example, if the pancreatitis is caused by gallstones, cholecystectomy is recommended once the acute inflammation has resolved. Or in case of alcoholic pancreatitis, alcohol abstinence is the key treatment option. Antibiotics are indicated only in cases of proven infected necrosis, confirmed by positive cultures, or documented systemic infection. We'll stop here for now. I know that was a lot of information to take in, but I really hope you found it useful. If you enjoyed this video and found the information helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel for more reliable medical content, and leave a comment with topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Thank you for joining me, and see you soon.